Horror movie characters aren't really known for their lateral thinking, street smarts, or even plain old common sense, and that's kinda why we love them. So in celebration of these fools, then I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 dumb mistakes that killed horror movie characters. Number 10, Cruz gets her head spun, Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder returned to our screens last year with the straight to Netflix zombie horror, Army of the Dead, a spiritual sequel of sorts to his original zombie smash, Dawn of the Dead. With LA, a post-apocalyptic wasteland, enter a ragtag team of zombie hunting mechanics, safe crackers, and pilots who attempt to break in and recover $200 million from a casino vault before it's too late. Among these fresh faces is supposed badass and first wave apocalypse survivor, Maria Cruz. Pitched front and center for majority of the film, she acts as a sort of counterpart and love interest to Dave Bautista's Scott Ward, but her utter inaction in the face of the undead leads to her untimely demise. In a truly shocking mid-film sequence, while the gang are trapped in the lower levels of the casino, the lift suddenly pings open and out come a swarm of zombies. Rather than jumping into action and drawing her weapon, however, Maria stands and just stares dumbfounded at the new arrivals, allowing one to grab her by the neck and, in one sharp twist, in Invert it. Like if only she had done something, anything in the face of this horde. Number 9. Brendan gets carried away, fresh. While most of the entries on this list center around innocent victims, horror movie villains aren't averse from making a dumb mistake or two that gets them killed. Case in point, the deranged Brendan from Fresh. This flick is all about old Brendan and his side hustle of kidnapping women and selling their meat to high paying clientele. The title itself comes from the fact that Brendan keeps his victims alive so that the meat can be as fresh as possible, cutting off bit by bit with each procedure. His latest victim, Noah, he actually falls for, though. After cutting off and selling her buttocks, yes, really, Brendan takes a liking to Noah, inviting her out on dates as she plans on winning his trust to escape. He stupidly really thinks that she loves him back, and as such, at one point allows her to go down on him with, let's say, bitey results. This severely injures Brendan, as you can probably imagine, and allows Noah the chance to free her friends and escape. Later on, the women kill him, and we can't say that he didn't deserve of such a brutal death. Number eight, Mika taunts the spirits, paranormal activity. Paranormal Activity shows the struggles of young couple Mika and Katie using their real-life actor names as the demon that has haunted Katie throughout her life sets up shop in their house. Filming and the night ensues, and we are treated to various door-slamming, kitchen-shaking spooks presented from inherently limited and unrevealing angles. Now, far be it from us to belittle the actions of anyone not willing to take ghosts and the paranormal too seriously, but given the apparent evidence of his eyes and ears, I mean, see the door slamming kitchen shaking that I just mentioned, Mika's decision to screw around with the spirits is far from advisable. Going against received wisdom and tackling the situation without a demonologist or any kind of professional help, Mika antagonizes the spirit, taking a lot of the happenings with a pinch of salt and even buying a Ouija board to communicate with it. This all leads to the spirit taking matters into its own hands, possessing Katie and killing him at the film's conclusion before throwing his body at the camera. Well, depending on which ending you get. However, maybe, just maybe, he could have walked away from this, but we'll never know. Number seven, Sally monologues with the maniac, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Built on the bones of a cult horror hit, 2022's Texas Chainsaw Massacre brought old man Leatherface out to play once again, this time with a cast of absolutely positively imbecilic millennials and Gen Zers to mow his way through. While it is hard to pick out a single mistake out of the many that get these characters killed, it's actually series original Sally Hardesty, whose rookie mistake really takes the biscuit here. Finally receiving the news that she has been awaiting of Leatherface's return, Sally springs into action with her revenge plans and shotgun in tow. Only when she actually has Leatherface cornered with nothing standing in her way, she just does nothing, monologues a bit, and then lets him go. Like, that would have been fine if the point here was to say that she froze and she no longer wanted him killed. But literally minutes after this scene, she's chasing him outside, shooting at him with the shotgun anyway. Of course, she dies, but why did she not just take the shot earlier? Like, there's no reason for this. Am I dumb? Am I missing something? Let me know in the comments. Number six, Megan fake kills herself, sorority role. 
In 2009's trashy slasher Sorority Row, Megan enlists the help of her sorority sisters to pull a prank on her boyfriend, Garrett. Megan fakes her own death during sex, and Garrett and her friends bring Megan to a lake where, in the process of dumping her body, Garrett buries a forearm wrench deep into Megan's chest. Now, while some may be inclined to place the blame for this on Jessica, who convinces Garrett that the air needs to be let out of Megan's lungs so that she sinks to the bottom of the lake and stays there, this elaborate prank is a weird one to begin with. I mean, sure, Garrett was cheating on her, and sure, she wanted to teach him a lesson, but despite the concern of earnestly convincing someone, never mind your partner during sex, that you have died, the sheer stupidity of such a move is beggar's belief. Like, surely exposing him in a Mean Girl-style comedy montage might have been the better option than going to such weird extremes where you're incredibly vulnerable. Number five, Lorraine Bales on Maxine X. Ty West's brand new slasher X has recently hit cinemas, ushering in a nostalgia for the genre's classics with a 1970s setting, plenty of gore, and as many poor choices as you can shake a bloody stick at. Here, a group of porn actors set out to make a game-changing new film in rural Texas, shacking up in a barnyard cabin led by a kooky older couple who have more than a few skeletons in their closet. Things, as you might have guessed, quickly get out of hand, the couple catch their guests in the act, and soon the blood begins to pour as the cat fight for their lives. Among the victims and the final two survivors are the timid church mouse Lorraine and the starry-eyed stripper Maxine. Against all odds, Maxine manages to slip the clutches of her pursuers and make her way up to their house where Lorraine is being held captive. Once freed, however, Lorraine blames Maxine for the atrocities befalling them and then proceeds to abandon her co-star and make a runner for the door. Apart from the fact that not splitting up is like slasher survival 101, to do it when you know full well the killers are lurking out outside is tantamount to just suicide. Needless to say, Lorraine barely has the door open before she's murdered dead. Number 4. Addison Fists the Razor Box Saw 2 the Saw franchise is riddled with questionable characters making questionable decisions, but perhaps none more so than Saw 2's Addison Corday. Trapped in a spooky murder house by Jigsaw, after separating herself from the group, never a smart move in a horror film as we've just established, Addison declines the opportunity for some critical thinking when faced with a clear box containing two handholds and the antidote that she needs to survive a serious dose of toxic nerve gas. Without Listening to the tape left for her, Addison goes ahead and jams her hand up there, spilling the antidote and becoming trapped by razor blades slicing into her wrist. So, what's her solution? Well, it's to jam the second hand in right beside it. This didn't have to be her end though, she could have just reached over with one arm and pulled back the blades to free herself before using the freed hand to push the blades out from under the other side. Granted, she's clearly not thinking straight at this point, I've heard a nerve gas will do that to you, but this is a stupid decision nonetheless. Number 3. Milburn plays Coochie Coo with a hammerpede. Prometheus. A lot of the entries on this list so far are understandably dumb. We enjoy them for that reason. This one is just bad writing and has been ridiculed as such. But Let's back up. In 2012, the crew of the Prometheus boldly went where no alien film had gone before, into the far reaches of the quasi-prequel. During their first venture out to the mysterious moon, LV-223, the mononymous, in a universe renowned biologist, Milburn, ignores the rules of nature and hostile environments and decides to get cutesy with an unidentified life form. One thing leads to another, and soon he's trying to tackle a hammerpede, something of a precursor to the infamous facehugger. Needless to say, it bites him, wraps his arm, and breaks into his spacesuit, leading not only to the worm-choking death of Milburn, but the far more cautious crewmate Fifel too. And like, listen, I'm no scientist, but I probably would react with more caution should I ever stumble across a weird alien freak like this, and I have no qualifications. Number 2. Dewey Delays the Double Tap Scream I know, I know I mentioned this a lot in videos recently, but I swear after this one, I'm over it. I'm moving on. But until then... With its tongue planted firmly in its cheek, Scream 2022 deals up another slice of meta horror, simultaneously affirming and subverting many of the genre and series tropes. Amongst these is the long-standing rule of not only the slasher playbook, but the horror genre as a whole. The double tap. Once the killer is down, execute a sharp, swift final blow, ideally to the head, to ensure that they stay there. After facing and apparently beating the killer in the local hospital, Dewey declares that he has to do 
just that. And that's smart, right? Well, it would be if he just got on with it, but rather than chucking a few bullets into his pistol and blasting away from a distance, Dewey does the hero walk right up to the killer and then pauses long enough to allow himself to become distracted and skewered like a kebab. Though the character survived nine stab wounds throughout the series, this time he definitely ain't coming back. Number one, Eric takes a leaf out of the dead's book, Evil Dead. In 2013's underrated Evil Dead reboot, a new gang of 20-somethings, including David Allen and his sister Mia, retreat to a cabin in the woods for a weekend intervention. Amongst them is high school teacher Eric, whose patience begins to wane pretty early into their days-long retreat. Searching for something to do and a little respite from the group's infighting, Eric takes to the basement where he finds cat corpses strung from the ceiling and a mysterious devilish book. Now, even in the Evil Dead universe, they must have have Cabin in the Woods films, right? Like, for the average Joe in any similar situation, this surely spells trouble, not story time, and especially so when isolated in such unfamiliar territory miles away from society's aid. Well, apparently not for Eric. He takes it upon himself to cut away the barbed wire binding the book and conduct a little light reading from the bloodstained pages, out loud. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I, like, find a book, I don't just start reading it out loud. I think my partner would really hate that. She wouldn't, she wouldn't go for it is all I'm saying, especially when it's a demon book like this. Anyway, with a brief incantation, he unleashes the demonic spirits and dooms himself and his friends to a night of murder, maiming, and the awakening of the so-called abomination. So yeah, she is Eric. Thanks, man. Really, really good going there. So that's our list. Don't see what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think about these dumb decisions? And are there any cool ones I missed off here? While you're down there as well, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to Culture Horror for more videos like this on the regular. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.